is the Seahawkers podcast, episode 376. I'm Brandon Schultz of the Military Seahawkers, and joining me, my good buddy and Montana Seahawker, Adam Emmert. Good buddy. I, uh, I'm glad that we're having this conversation today, me and you together. I thought maybe you could use a hug or <laughs> I, if I could just reach out, because I know your Oklahoma Sooner Seahawks mix uh, of fandoms that you so desperately wanted to happen. Um, is off the table, and I just wanted to check in with you. Instead of gloating, I thought I'd check in with you. My hopes on those worlds colliding. I, I guess Trey Brown will now just continue to be our only Oklahoma Sooner, and I, that might be for the better. I'm not happy about this Baker Mayfield to Carolina business, okay? So I am glad that you checked okay. in. I'm glad that you approached it in that way because... Yeah, if you would have come on and would have gloated a little bit and been like, yeah. ha ha, he's not coming here. Hooray for yeah. all Seahawks fans. Like, you know, I kind of expected yeah, we you don't to have to deal with his annex and the contract and, you know, having to extend him. And then Drew Locke and Gino being put out and possibly winning two more games to just uh, edge us out of a good quarterback pick next year. Yeah, I mean, we just missed out on all that. And I was really more concerned about your feelings than how right and vindicated that I feel in this moment about being so right. Did I mention I was right? Well, the good news, if I, if I really want to try hard to put a spin on this, uh -huh. one of the teams that's competing with the Seahawks for a top five draft pick in 2023 just got better. And so now we have a, an even greater chance at finishing in the top five in terms of draft picks. I'd say that uh, the Carolina Panthers took a solid step to the side. Come on. You are not one of these people who think that Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield are essentially the same quarterback. Uh, I'm exactly one of those people. And the only difference is, is that Baker played on a good team. And Sam Darnold got ruined by googly eyed Adam Gaze. So you think that if Sam Darnold all of a sudden goes to a good team now, he's going to be a good quarterback. Like if you no. were to just go to the Browns because the Browns are going to need a quarterback this year, that he's going to do the exact same that Baker would have. I think if their careers had started but flip flopped, then Sam Darnold would be Baker Mayfield. But now at this point, after he got screwed over in New York by Adam Gaze and then basically uh, went to no better of a coaching situation with Matt Rule there in Carolina, he doesn't have a fighting chance. He's got. Too many bad habits that are ingrained now. Too many ghosts. Too many all that stuff. This guy's going to be tough for him. I mean, he basically got uh, David Carr disease. The Carolina Panthers will finish. Hmm. Will they go all the way up to second in the division? I bet they go. I bet they go nine and eight. Six and 11. Hmm. We'll see who's right at the end of the year. The six and 11, that's not much of an upgrade over Sam Darnold, but I think they could have done that anyway. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's interesting that you made that uh, <laughs> observation. I I understand your opinion of Baker now. It's, it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I know there's a lot of Seahawks fans celebrating out there. So, congratulations, you. <laughs> there's also there's also a fair number who are bombed. I mean, there are people that were really wishing I know. for. It because... I'm trying to. I'm look. I know that. Uh, yeah, there were quite a few of us that were kind of hoping for a good quarterback this year and not. Not a bad one. So, but yeah. I, hey, I can fully get behind Drew Locke now. Drew is, look, he's going to be our guy. He's the guy I have to hope for to be good. If it's ends, if, if it ends up being Gino, then that's fine too. But, you know, uh, I like Drew's personality. I can root for him. I, I'm really into Dreno Smock. I think he's going to be a great quarterback for us. Uh, what? Who? Dreno Smock. Dreno Smock. That's the mashup of the, the two yeah. names that you came up with, huh? Yeah, just on the fly. I just made that up just now. I'm pretty proud of it. Dreno Smuck. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll we'll see if it sticks. Uh, probably not. I, but, I'm going to uh, guess probably not. No, no. But hey, you never know. There's been things that have stuck on this show that I never thought would have <laughs> stuck and things that I really had hoped that, that never really did. Um, so we'll see. Well, one thing that we know has stuck throughout the years, throughout the off seasons, it's July. And so it's time to get into our Know Your Rival series. And okay. I think we generally start off with maybe the team that we think of as, I don't know, relatively inconsequential. 
Mm -hmm. It's not alphabetical. It just has to do with the fact that the Cardinals, they're not much of a rival. They're usually finishing at the bottom of the division when they're not finishing one spot ahead of us because Russell Wilson got hurt last year. Right. And I think this is a year that they revert back to the norm. I really do think that they're going to be the last place team in this division this year. I genuinely believe that. Ooh, you see, you're going to go against what Cardinals fans and tradition has brought them then because they zigzag through the division. Where are they at in the zigzag? Did they really finish no. second in the division last yeah, year? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Niners finished third, right? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah, so this chart is right. And so when they go from four to three to two, then it's usually up to first place. So if we go by this historic tradition, um, sure. they should finish first in 2022. I'm going by the historic tradition of when your quarterback is unhappy with a contract situation and then made it not just public, but weirdly public throughout the offseason. And it still didn't get his contract and is still not happy. Pair that with a coach that has been more or less figured out by the league. I mean, they've kind of got it figured. The suspension of DeAndre Hopkins, their stars, you know, most of them are old guys and they've gotten a year older. Right. And you just kind of they had some losses on defense. You start pairing all that up and it just really is a toxic little mess that they've got going down there in the desert. Of all the offseason drama within the division, I can't think of a team with more than the Arizona Cardinals. And you brought up Kyler. I mean, shoot, they even had tragic news. And I mean, we can get the saddest news out of the way, but they signed okay. former Vikings cornerback Jeff Gladney to a two year deal. And both he and his girlfriend died in a car crash in May. And whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So oh, one of the guys God. that they brought in to to help out with the secondary and they are struggling with the secondary. Obviously, that's a, the huge hit and not just to the to the team. But yeah, I mean, dude's dead. I know. So tragedy in the Cardinals organization. But you mentioned the the news with Kyler Murray. They've also been dealing with their center who they traded for last offseason, Rodney Hudson. He can't decide if he's actually going to mm -hmm. play this year. Now, something tells me it's kind of one of those old guy things like Aaron Donald, where he says, well, I don't really want to play next year. I'm thinking about retiring. Oh, hey, here's a new contract that uh, they want me to sign. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll come back and play a couple more years. I, I kind of wonder if that's the situation. But man, if they lose Hudson this offseason, that's a huge hit to their off. Like they don't have anybody else that can just go in and play center. Yeah, they're a middling offensive line at best to begin with. And if Hudson does not come back, then, yeah, that would be a ma massive, massive blow to that offensive line. But with that said, too, I would imagine it might not even be a contract thing. He could be doing the old guy NFL thing where he's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I might retire. It's hard telling not know it. And then like week three of the preseason is about to wrap up. Yeah, I'm good. To go. He just doesn't like, want to do I the offseason really stuff. really didn't want to do training camp and. Look, when you get to a certain age, like you kind of don't need it. Really, the only benefit of you being there is for the younger players around you and just kind of building cohesion. So, um, yeah, he may just think at his position with all the wear and tear that he takes on his body that, hey, I can just kind of play the long game here and just kind of milk this out and, and show up, which would be my guess. My guess would be that he's there. I hope he's not. I hope he retires and has a... Beautiful retirement life. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, you hope that Kyler Murray just decides to sit out the season too. Although I take nah. that back because Colt McCoy is second on the depth chart and I would rather face Kyler Murray than that. The Seahawk killer. The Seahawk killer, Colt McCoy. <laughs> yeah. oh, see, that's a, that's a much nicer term that, uh, that you came up with. Uh, I, yeah. I had to self-censor myself when I yeah. got to thinking about Colt McCoy. We're going to be that dirty cat. Or bastard piece of catfish that always catfish and beats us for no catfish and reason he's no good. Colt McCoy. It's, it's exactly those string of words that were going <laughs> okay. through my head, and I, I right. told myself I was wasn't going to say them. No, oh, well, uh, I'm here. I'm here for you. Uh, I'm like, uh, what is it, Key or Peel, who was the uh, uh, anger translator for Obama at that one White House press correspondence dinner? That was yeah, key. That's what I just. Okay, it was key. 
I, I, I don't know which is which. I, I've never really watched the show, so I, I can't tell you. But uh, yeah, uh, that's what I was here for. Their offensive line, they have... Now, DJ Humphreys, good left tackle. Mm-hmm. You know, it was surprising to me that he had the top salary in terms of cap hit on the team and not DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, because they gave him new money, right? When they traded for him? D-Hop? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the year after, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, no, that is surprising. But left tackle is a bigger premium position than wide receiver in this league. Believe it or not. That's that's true. They uh they would have if they would have kept Christian Kirk on the team for the salary that Jack the Jacksonville Jaguars gave him, he would be number two ahead of DeAndre Hopkins. See not only should Rodney Hudson be calling for a new deal, not only Kyler Murray calling for a new deal. DeAndre, well, I guess DeAndre Hopkins doesn't have a whole lot of leverage when he's sitting out six games of, of the season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we can get into a little bit of that, too, about his suspension, because, uh, you know, as much as he protests, like it, the, the way the whole thing went down, it definitely seems like my guess would be is he was trying to rehab from injury and. Did a little extra that he never normally doesn't do. Right. And, uh, you know, got off of it, was ready to go for the season and then tested for a trace amount. That's what I think. In terms of PR, that's always your best move because it, it makes it sound like like if you allow that to leak out there, then you're, you just sound like you're being a good teammate. Oh, I'm just trying to get back and back in the mix and and healed up. Yeah. And the other part of it, too, and this is something I actually agree with, and I think that maybe could be looked at throughout the years here through the league is the idea of different uh, performance enhancing, quote unquote, drugs being used during the rehab process. I think that's something that, you know, like HGH or something like that to help your body repair itself. I think that that's something that should be talked about. I think it's a little ludicrous, to be frank, that they're not allowed to do that. No, just using it on the regular to recover from each and every game and like, you know, enhance your performance that way and everything. That's a whole nother deal. But you're coming back from like an Achilles or something like that. Yeah. If HGH helps with that. Yeah. I, I think that would be not only better for the player's health in the future, but also better for the league. I mean, you're going to have a lot of these older stars be able to stick around a little bit longer because their recovery time will be closer to that of a younger player. I, it makes sense to me. I, I wouldn't it wouldn't hurt my feelings if except except if it's like Jalen Ramsey and his two shoulder surgeries. He needs to he can't be on PEDs like he needs his full recovery time. So that way he comes back later in the in the regular season. Just for stars on the Rams. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the real answer to this is to just put us in charge of who does and doesn't get to use the stuff. So we'll be really fair. (laughs) Totally. It'll be totally fair. We have no competing interests. We're not going to put money on what, you know, what week a certain guy is going to be back and playing. Yeah, I don't even need to do that. Like, I just if my my fandom will definitely not get in the way of this. I can promise you that. No, I think if we had control over when guys came back, I think I would be down with putting money on it. I mean, I would never say that because that would, you know, put our integrity in question. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, if people in Congress can, you know, bet stocks. We should be able to, to bet sports and, in, and make but, decisions that are important to that. We have a huge say in. Hey, if those Congress people don't do that, how would they ever afford the two homes that they have to keep one in their district and one in D.C.? I it mean, costs money it's to just, get reelected. I mean, it's, it's just so hard. It's just so hard. Never mind all the donation emails that come in. Yeah. I mean, they they need that money. Obviously, they wouldn't be asking me for so many donations if they didn't need the money. I don't know how anybody can get by on the 250 odd some grand a year that they get. Like I could barely, I mean, geez, I might as well just eat spam every day. Just like Kyler Murray. Yeah. Forced to live on such a penance. Kyler Murray needs, needs that contract. Yeah. And that's, a, that's exactly what's happening to Kyler. Like, you know, he's got to live on that, uh, that rookie wage as every other player who's not a quarterback usually has to do. I don't know how he's going to do it. He's he's only making eleven point three million dollars this season, you know, and that's the thing about the league. When we talk about the league, you think about it in terms of you and me, right? And eleven million for a year, 
Yeah, sign my ass up. I will take all the hits behind that bad offensive line. I will do that. No problem. I can't even run around like Kyler. I'll be a sitting duck and they'll just tee off on me and I'll be dead. That's fine. I'll take the 11 million. That sets me up for life. But in comparison to the peers that he plays with, yes, it kind of is a penance. Like it's just, it's just a tiny little bit. You put it into perspective too of just the top guys on the team. I mentioned DJ Humphreys, the top paid guy. DeAndre Hopkins, 17.9 million. JJ Watt, 15.9. Buda Baker, 14.7. Rodney Hudson, 12.6. All those guys have have gone on to, to second contracts. But you look below him and Justin Pugh, yeah, he's gotten his second contract playing left guard for them. But then the next guy down, Isaiah Simmons, a guy that they just drafted in the top 10 a couple of years ago. And he's at 5.6. So He's on his rookie deal, and he's really not that far behind Kyler Murray when when you look at the uh, the top paid guys on the team. No, it's about half as much. Do you think he's twice as impactful as Isaiah Simmons, or maybe like I don't know, eight times? Twice sounds about right. Yeah, a, a linebacker who's kind of underachieving. Yeah, if you say impactful, I guess maybe it's a lot more than that because you know, win or lose, you know, good player, bad, it's both an impact. And Kyler has plenty of both. He does. But if you're the Cardinals, like, how could you pay him this year? I I wouldn't. There's no effing way. No way would I pay him this year. If you're Steve Keim, yeah. do you make him play out this year and then franchise tag him next year? Is that your hardcore play? 100%. I am not giving him, you know, record-setting money. There's no way. With his style of play, his build, and then also you look at the late season fades and then that, I mean, how can you, how could you look at your fan base with a serious face, give Kyler some huge contract, you know, Watson style, let's say, you know, cause he's going to be looking for something in that range that maybe not the full guarantee. Like how could you look your fan base in the eye after that playoff loss and be like, yeah, here's the dude. Let's do it. I just want to play that loop of him throwing an underhanded interception that gets pick sixed over and over again. But then again, they did extend uh, Kingsbury with his late season fallouts, and they don't seem to have a problem with that. I was super happy when they extended Kingsbury. I was like, that's sweet. Let's do that. That sounds great. They've uh, it's an interesting organization. You know, they they've made some moves this offseason, though. I guess the biggest move they made was trading and and probably one that needed to be done considering the D hop suspension. They go and get Marquise Hollywood Brown Mm -hmm. from the Ravens, another former Oklahoma Sooner, someone Mm -hmm. that Kyler's familiar with and they bring him to the team. Yeah. It was an interesting trade because obviously Hollywood Brown is thought of as a a good receiver in this league and was probably the go-to guy on that Ravens team. If you're not counting tight ends, I always felt like those were kind of more the go-to guys on their passing attack, but you see the value the Ravens put on them. They're like, we're not paying you the type of money receivers are going for right now. No way. Absolutely not. See you later. We'll figure it out. And you know, the Cardinals, they traded, what did they trade to get him? So they gave up their first round pick number 23 overall and they got a third round pick back along with Brown. Okay. So about the equivalent of a second when it's all yeah, said. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Yeah. And for a guy who's what slightly better Tavon Austin, he's really small. He's kind of more of a gadget guy, really. And I know he's been kind of a burner downfield throughout his career, but he's not a game changing guy. I mean, he's not going to replace D hop. No, I do think he was going to make a, Nice addition to that receiving core when D Hop comes back, but Hollywood Brown and AJ Green to start the year, that would not fill me with a bunch of confidence. And if you if you stumble out of the blocks, you're totally screwed because you're gonna stumble down the stretch. Yeah, I, I think the the thought process behind that trade is one, you don't have to pay him right away. I think you improve Brown is better than Christian Kirk. And so it's it's an upgrade in that respect. And yeah, when you think of that that three wide receiver uh, room and then even Rondale Moore, who they got in the second round last year, who I really liked, 
I think that's a good four. I think he's probably better than AJ Green at this point in AJ's career. When I looked at the depth chart and I saw AJ Green as the third and that they re-upped him. It's surprising. Green wasn't exactly, he didn't play all that great last year, but I, he I suppose fine. that's. He, yeah, was he was fine, but he was better than, he, yeah, he was better than Julio was for the Titans last year. When slightly. You think of old vets that are. Yeah, slightly. I think wide receiver is probably this team's strength overall. Yeah, when D hops back, you betcha. I, I think that that would be what you would lean on. I mean, the running backs aren't terrible. I mean, James Conner had a nice season last year. Got a three-year um, contract out of the deal. Yeah, and, but a little older, and he's a really physical runner and puts a lot of wear and tear on his body. Uh, hasn't had a greatest track record and staying healthy throughout seasons, too. So I think it's hard to just rely on him. They got Daryl Williams, Eno you know, Benjamin. I, I, there's not a ton of depth, though, behind Connor. There really isn't. Defensive line is the place where they really got hit this offseason. Yeah. You lose... Chandler Jones. Where did Chandler go? Raiders? Yes. Chargers. Nope. He went to the Raiders to <laughs> okay. follow Russell Wilson. Yeah. I knew it was one of the AFC West teams. Couldn't lose his cash cow. So in terms of pass rushers now, they've got Marcus Golden. They've got Dennis Gardeck. Who? He's their weak side linebacker. And JJ. JJ, yeah. So their other defensive linemen... Richard Lawrence, Zach Allen, and then their two inside linebackers, Zaven Collins, Isaiah Simmons, who, you know, both really young linebackers. Zaven Collins going to be calling the defense this year uh, is is what the, the Cardinals are talking about. And he's just going into his second year, so could be interesting. Uh, but no, I mean, I think we've seen Simmons and Collins and especially uh, uh, Simmons, like, he came out and you really thought that he could be a very versatile chess piece kind of player. At least that's how he was projected. But a guy who's kind of a tweener and doesn't really fit anywhere and really did underachieve. So I, I don't think linebacker is necessarily a, a position of strength. It's not a position of weakness. It's meh. No, I think that this, this is the area where you you hope that there's the greatest upside if you're a Cardinals fan because you have young talent a mix of young talent and Marcus Golden. Right. Who's a giant puddle of meh. Who they liked so much that they, didn't they trade him away to the Giants and then they brought him back? Yeah. Uh, or did were... he go to the Giants and free agency and then they they got him back? Exactly. He departed and yeah. he returned. Yes. Safety tandem. Pretty decent. That'd be Buda Baker, obviously good. Jalen Thompson, pretty good. Jalen Thompson's, I guess, a league average guy. That's fine. Uh, Buda Baker is very good, though. That That is something that is undeniable. Cornerbacks, Byron Murphy, Marco Wilson. Yeah, they're... Oh, they're, yeah. They're, Cornerbacks. Uh, you said their names, but I think they're also known as uh, Drew Locke's... Catfish! <laughs> or they will be. <laughs> yeah. Those are the type of teams that you beat up on when you've got a you know, lower-tier quarterback is the... That's when they look good is against secondaries like that, especially when there's not going to be much for a pass rush. Defensively, they're going to take a massive step back this year. And I think that's their biggest problem. And they st they really invested on the perimeter on offense and instead of the lines. I mean, they didn't really upgrade the line this year in any significant way. And they no, And then if Hudson retires, that's huge. Yeah, they're one injury away from disaster on the offensive line. And then you pair that with Kyler's style of play. I mean, I there's going to be one of these seasons that Kyler just doesn't finish the year. Yeah. And then what do you have? Well, mother Seahawks killer. Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> and I like Colt McCoy a lot, actually. I liked him coming out of college. Like, not that I thought he'd be a great pro or anything. I just I just like the guy and his game, you know? Yeah, he seems all right for a, for a guy who went to Texas. <laughs> oh, Hassan Reddick is uh, is their other guy who stepped in uh, behind Seahawks killer Chandler Jones. It's like whoever they have at pass rush, I, I feel like they're just going to dominate the the Seahawks offensive line for whatever reason. Although this year is probably going to be a little bit easier since we have two rookie tackles. I think it's going to be harder. I think, Charles, think. Yeah, I think Charles Cross is the real deal in pass protection. Okay, 
I mean, he's going to have some struggles here and there, no doubt about it. But I think overall, like left tackle is one of those positions. If you've got one of those guys, they come in and they're a difference maker right out of the gate. Yeah, I'm, I'm in wait and see mode with regard to the offensive line for the Seahawks. But back to cornerback. The big issue for this Cardinals defense. When I hear fans calling for, man, you know who we need to bring back? We need to bring back Robert Alford. And uh, right. <laughs> when, that, when that's when that's what you're hearing from a fan base, you know, things are rough at corner. Hey, I, I get being in desperation mode at certain positions. Uh, we have definitely been that way for a number of years at different positions this year. It feels a little that way at quarterback. Uh, so I can understand. I mean, but yeah, it's just not a good group. And you again, you combine that with a pass rush that is going to be even lesser than it was last year. And it wasn't a fabulous pass rush last year. There, there are still some big name free agents relatively. I mean, guys on the downside of their career, like Chris Harris, uh, Janoris Jenkins, I'm pretty sure Sherman's retired, but his name's on this list. Joe Hayden out there, Desmond Trufant, Kevin King still out there, Xavier Rhodes. Okay. Kevin King's a younger dude. Yeah. I mentioned Robert Alford. They may have some options there. There's retreads available. Just a matter if you want to pay them those sort of, you know, kind of veteran dollars, but they got $10 million in, in salary cap space right now. Yikes. Yeah. So there's your answer right there. And if you want to try and pay Kyler and if you want to pay Rodney Hudson to get him back in the building. Yeah, exactly. Could be tough, but seller caps magic. They extend a few guys. They can make some cap space. Oh, I'm sure you can shuffle the, you know, rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic and, and make the space. <laughs> you can do that. I really do think this is going to be a fall apart year for the cards. I, I genuinely do. I, I've i been talking about their overratedness for this entire Kingsbury Murray era, and it's pretty well played out exactly that way. And I, I think after last year, such a demoralizing end to that season. And then with the extra drama throughout this off season, I mean, you like Kyler's agent can't just write a really nice letter on some really nice stationery to the rest of the league and be like, so allow us to win 13 games this year and two playoff games, sign Kyler Murray's agent and send it to the whole league. Like he did when he was trying to pump up Kyler and he sent out that really nice little letter that uh, was on some pretty fancy stationery to all the media types. Yeah, well, before <laughs> Kyler got here, you know, they were dumpster fire. Da, 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 da. Now that now the dumpster fire only smolders, so pay the man. Murray steps up in the pocket. Now he's got a slide back. Now he looks. Now he goes down. Puna Ford fights his way free and comes right up the middle. And there's no answer for 97 as he just blasts Kyler Murray and drops him for a loss. Second sack for Puna Ford today. Right, let's get into. Oh, you got to talk about pounding the Puna at that point, right? <laughs> pound, Puna pounding the Kyler. Yeah. Yeah. That was a Puna pound. I want to get into the schedule for the Arizona Cardinals. Let's 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 look. To... Okay. So week one loss. Week two <laughs> loss. Week three win, but only because they got lucky. Week four loss. Week five win just to keep Kingsbury from getting fired in season. That's what they think anyways. Loss, loss, win, rest losses. Wow. You, without even knowing who they're playing, I really like who you pick the wins and losses against. <laughs> yeah, it just feels right. I'm telling you. Week one, they start off the season at home against the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> L. Week two, they go on the road. Take on the Las Vegas Raiders. That's a loss. But week three, back at home, Los Angeles Rams. That's where they get the, that's where you had them pegged for their win. Yeah. Yeah. They probably get the win there inexplicably over the Rams. Then they travel to Carolina, take on the Panthers. We get OU quarterback versus OU quarterback. Mm -hmm. The battle of yeah. Baker and Kyler. Yeah. I think, I think Baker's going to be making some biscuits that day. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. You got him at one and three. And hey, as long as McCaffrey's still healthy in that game, that could definitely be a win for the, the Panthers. I, it could be. This next one's tough, though. Week five, Philadelphia Eagles. 
I don't know what to think about the Eagles. There's so much hype around them. Oh, God, they're so overrated. Jesus. For a mediocre roster. I, I kind of think that they have a similarly mediocre roster as the as the Cardinals do. I 100% concur. It's going to be a mediocre off whatever week that is. Week five? Yeah. So uh, the Eagles win because they don't have an old kicker. So oh, OU quarterback against OU quarterback again. Oh, hey, they're back to back. Well, weeks. that's that's not accurate. An OU quarterback against an OU running back, or maybe an OU baseball player against an, an OU running back. He, he didn't play running back for OU. Uh, was he on the field? J- Jalen Hurts was. Uh, yeah, he yeah, threw on the ball the field? around a little. Well, running backs can throw too. I just watched the history of the Wildcat the other day, and Ronnie Brown was throwing touchdowns. He's a running back that threw it sometimes. Okay, well, I think you peg this upcoming week as a loss for the Cardinals because week six is when they play at Seattle. The first game, it's the final game. We actually do get one game where DeAndre Hopkins still serving his suspension. I thought we would get Mm. both games against the Cardinals late in the season. Once Kyler Murray's injured, we have to play Colt McCoy twice. He throws it up to D-Hop multiple times and they smoke us. Uh, for two different games, but this, I think uh, the Seahawks will have a chance to win this game. Yeah, unless Kyler has like an ankle and then Kingsbury is like, well, look, Kyler, you're a little banged up. Why don't you take a week off? Let's put in mother Catfish! or Se- Seahawks killer Colt McCoy. That's what's going to happen. Although now that we're playing with backup quarterbacks, maybe it actually evens out. Ooh, yeah, we don't know if we have a potential Arizona Cardinal killer on our roster. Yeah, we just may. We just may. Drew may unlock this for us. I hope so. Yeah, that's the last time I make a joke like that with Drew Locke. I, I'm sorry. I won't ever do that again. That was terrible. I, I also made the joke that after the Seahawks didn't get Baker, that we have locked up a top five draft pick. Well played. Well played. Thanks. Week seven, New Orleans Saints. Another team that I can't quite decide what they're going to be. I feel like there's some hype again around the Saints finishing middle of the pack or toward the top of the division for some reason. And I can't quite get there. Was Sean Payton yeah. gone? Yeah, they're the biggest mystery team in the NFL, or at least the NFC to me. I really don't know what to expect from that team. And I think Kamara is serving a suspension as well, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be a, a weird because really Peyton was the only guy to kind of be able to harness famous Jameis a little bit. And with him gone, I wonder if that continues. I don't know. It won't because the Carolina Panthers are going to finish second in the division ahead of the Saints and the Falcons. Yep. That sounds right. But I don't know. You could tell me about anything with the Saints and I'd believe you. All right, middle of the season for the Arizona Cardinals at the Minnesota Vikings. So where do we think through eight weeks going against the Vikings? What do we think that the Cardinals record is to this point in the the season? Three and five. Three and five. Okay. But still talked about as a fringy playoff contender. And this is the type of game that Captain Kirk wins and is like, see, I beat contenders. It is a 10 a.m. start time game, so it's not prime time. So, yes, Kirk will dominate the Cardinals in this game. It just feels, especially a bad secondary. Those, those are the types of teams that uh, Kirk Cousins feasts on. Mm-hmm. Well, then they get into the NFC West and AFC West portion of the schedule for the next four games. They have Seattle at home, on the road against the Rams, Niners at home. Chargers at home. So this is, they get three out of the next four at home. Isn't that amazing that they put the beginning of the end of the Kingsbury era at home so that the hometown fans can see it live and in person? I I take that back. Uh, 49ers is the Mexico City game. Oh, okay. Well, hey, spread the Cardinals suck internationally. Let's do it. (laughs) Absolutely. This is the beginning of the end of the Kingsbury era. at this little run of games right here. Yeah, this is well, because it is the second half of the season. It'll be the start of the collapse. Although I I don't know how sure I am. The Niners are going to be decent this next year either with the Trey Lance experiment. So nobody knows about the 49ers. 
And all I hear, well, we can get to the 49ers in probably the next episode. Sure. But I have heard so many 49ers fans taking so much issue with all these rankings of roster talent. Like, oh, 49ers are better than 13th in terms of roster talent. Okay. But you don't even know who your quarterback's going to be. So, right. Yeah. I'd have to look at the roster front to back and kind of go through the other teams, I guess, to be like, are they better than 13th? But that doesn't feel far off. I do think they can run their way to seven, seven wins. So, sure. So, I, I think that's what's going to make them just slightly better than the cards this year. So, yeah, this Monday night game, this is going to be up in the air as far as Cardinals 49ers. Who's going to win this game? No. I think it's a loss for the cards. Second half of the season. Sure. Okay. Beginning and the end of the, of the Kingsbury. Being generous through this four game stretch. They, they maybe win one game. That's a big baby. So then the, they would have four wins going into their bye week in week 13. That sounds exactly right. Okay. And then that's when they select the new interim coach. <laughs> Well, they would hit it just in time to play Bill Belichick and the Patriots in week 14. Loss. At State Farm Stadium. Then they go on the road and, well, they have to beat the Denver Broncos just to improve our draft position. Right. So let's give them that win over the Broncos. Well, what they'll do is they'll start Colt McCoy because they're playing a Russell Wilson-led team. Yes. And get the win. The Let's Ride curse activates Colt McCoy. A hundred percent. Tom Brady and the Bucks in week 16. Loss. At the Atlanta Falcons. Win. Yeah, they should win that game. And they close out the season at the San Francisco 49ers. Win. Oh, does that take yeah. them to seven? Seven wins? That's seven about and right. ten? Yeah, all right. I thought six and eleven, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You think that that's good for fourth in the division? Five, six wins? Yeah. You think we're, you think the Seahawks, you want the Seahawks to do better than that? It's not that I necessarily want that, but they're going to have at least eight wins on the year. Okay. Eight or nine wins is my prediction for the, the Hawks this year. And you wouldn't want two more wins with, if you think Baker could deliver two more wins, you wouldn't want that? No. That makes our draft position even worse. <laughs> But practically a playoff team. We can only keep a, a decent roster down with a good head coach one year with you know bad quarterback play for one year. And it can only keep it down so much. They've got to bounce back after that. Well, you got to get that quarterback. Yeah, that'd be handy. Well, that's a look at the Cardinals schedule. We took a look at their roster. Disaster. Yeah. They're a disaster. It could go poorly. The so Cardinals. there's always a couple of those teams that made the playoffs the year before that never that don't make the or even sniff the playoffs the next year. The Cardinals are a prime candidate for that. The Niners are too, though. Yeah, I would agree with you. We could talk about the Debo drama and the Trey Lance experience and all that stuff on the next pod, I'm sure. But there are just as many questions there as there are in Seattle. And everybody just acts like, oh, well, the Niners are going to be good. And my question, my response to that is, really? Are we sure? Are we sure? It all hinges on the quarterback there. Yeah. And maybe not all of it, but because they they have questions in their secondary, too. We'll get to it. We, we have three weeks of know your rivals, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't need to be getting too deep into the into the Niners this week. Well, the one thing to keep your uh, keep in mind here as we go into the Niners, uh, preview next week is that Shanahan has a very distinct track record of following up a pretty darn good year with a, Oh my God, is he going to get fired here? Yeah. So 11 and six regressing to six and 11 and yeah. 2022. That feels about right to me. That's our, that's our official show prediction. And that's being generous at the end of the year. Because they could just flame totally out. Yeah, we gave them like we bones. gave them that win over the Broncos. Yep, and uh, over the Niners to close the season. Yeah, and the Broncos one is selfish and, and dipped in fandom, no doubt about it. But that's fine. But really, those two wins are because they make the switch. They probably make their defensive coordinator the interim head coach, and they get a couple wins for Vance Joseph. 
Vance Joseph. Huzzah. <laughs> I like Vance Joseph. And hey, that actually lines up pretty good too, right? Like that'd be a coaching revenge game for right? Vance Did Joseph the win against over the Broncos. Broncos. Yeah. No, I think you're right. The script here. It, it does line up pretty perfectly. We may have a crystal ball this year. We'll see. Yeah. On to the second half of the show. All right. I just shook the magic eight ball. It says all signs point to yes. Takes the snap. Hands to Penny. He gets a backside cut. He goes across midfield. Down to the 40. He's going to outrun him. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. He is in. Touchdown. Seahawks. Rashad Penny was going so fast. He was crossing yard lines that I didn't even see. <laughs> 62 yards ran away from the defense. Rashad Penny, what a day. And the Seahawks have found their running back of the future. He's been here, here all along. Yeah. That was a Cardinals highlight. Okay. Didn't say anything about the Cardinals. I, I like the sack of Kyler Murray better. Yeah. Although I do like uh, Rabes and his, uh, he was running so fast. I couldn't even see the yard lines. Like yeah. that's pretty good. That's good. And we're going to need it. We're going to need Penny to be that guy this year. We really are e- either him or Kenneth Walker or yeah. I mean, or, uh, you know, double or what do they call that? A two headed monster. Yeah. There it yeah. is. No, you were trying to come up with the name that you made up for him at the beginning of the show. And it was so obscure that you couldn't, you couldn't pull the recall on it. No, that was for running this. I was talking about the running backs, the quarterbacks. Oh, I, I thought yeah. you were talking about the complimentary nature with the, the two headed quarterback. Oh, no. Two headed quarterback. One. Dreno smock is going to light the league on fire. Don't think I forgot. Well, the big news for the team this past week. <laughs> yeah. It happened on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it happened on Twitter. Did this, did this uh, matter? <laughs> Uh, it doesn't matter, but it was funny. Drew Locke trending on Twitter after Drew is catching strays because a Seahawks fan referred to tennis as not a sport. Yeah, which number one, dude, you're wrong on that one. Tennis is indeed a sport. It's a real sport. It's kind of a sport. It's not golf. No, nah, it's a real sport. It's not, it's not golf. It's not NASCAR. Those are fun games, but tennis is an actual sport. When you get old, you can't really compete anymore. It's just how it is. I do, I do think that the, the age component. Yeah, as I get older, I recognize the sports that are are a little more athletic because you can't can't really play them as well. Yeah, that's the difference between being a game and a sport. If your sport, quote unquote, like NASCAR, allows dudes at the age of sixty to win major championships like Daytona or you know, big races and things like that against guys in their twenties. You don't have a sport. It's the same thing with golf. You see the all timers compete into their fifties or come out of the woodwork for a weekend at the masters, you know, like Nicholas style or something like that. Yeah. Freddie couples always seem to pull yeah. uh, some of those. And I love golf. I do. It's the game that I played the most growing up. Uh, but tennis is hard. No, tennis is pretty hard. Well, it's golf more is athletic. hard. Tennis is more athletic than baseball, I think. Like by far. Oh, by far. By far. Yeah, if you're if you're saying tennis isn't a sport, that'd be like saying that basketball isn't a sport. Well, maybe the guy uh gets hung up on the idea of individual sports. Like if you if you're mm, it's an not an individual a team sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he says that, I mean that's a true fact. Like you can't can't really <laughs> deny that. Unless you're playing couples tennis. But you know. One thing we learned out of this is you don't poke the uh, what's what comes after millennials. What's the next uh, group of of generation? Are, are, are they is, still are they just called? Gen Z or no? I think they're Zoomers. Like, don't poke the Zoomer who runs the U.S. Open Twitter account because he's going to respond with straight fire. Yeah, I think they're Zoomers because it's Generation Z, dude. I don't know. It's just what I've heard from somebody who would be in that generation. Yeah. Because it's the, the, zoomers. the boomers and the zoomers. Right. No, you uh, you do not, especially the one running the U.S. Open. Because here's what the I thing. Was saying. It, was a, it wasn't even a response to the U.S. Open in particular. It was a response to a Sports Center highlight tweet 
Right. And then, yes. Okay. So we probably should give some background for the people who didn't hear about it, but because it yeah, is the only, yeah. it is the only off season Seahawks news that really happened this past week. So you should have heard right. about it. it you, yeah. you shouldn't need us to recap this for you, but sports center tweet highlight tennis Seahawks fan says not a sport. U S open says, says the guy who's going to be rooting for drew lock for 17 games this coming season. Yeah. And yes, that got drew lock trending, taking strays. DK Metcalf jumped into the, to the fray to defend his, his quarterback's honor. Then the U S open said, based on your pre-draft photo, we concur. We step back. That, that, hey, and look, you got to give that young Zoomer credit to know that he was outmatched, right? <laughs> like when DK comes at you, you're like, yeah, no, whatever you say, DK. Whatever, like, no, we're whatever good. you say, we're good. We, you, whatever you say, Cease big fire. We, we yeah, Absolutely. Put your bat suit away. Oh, you can't. That's your real body. Okay. Yes, for sure. Let's not, let's not do this. Uh, yeah, pretty good. And, uh, you know, Drew Locke even responded, which was uh, a, a classy response, I thought. He had a classy response. He even he even wished the intern at the U.S. Open Twitter account a happy Fourth of July. He said happy Fourth of July to everybody, but especially the intern running at U.S. Open. Heck yeah. He had a big weekend. That guy made himself some money or gal made himself some serious bank uh, as a social media manager over the weekend. Got a lot of attention. Yeah. And then Did it, uh, when you first saw it, when you first saw the the response from the U.S. Open, what was your reaction about wh- which response? The the first one about, oh, it says the guy who's going to be watching 17 games of Drew Locke this year. Well, OK, so there was that. And I was like, yeah, OK. Uh, but then I think there was another back and forth there, too. And then they put in the Chris Sims quarterback rankings where Drew Locke's ranked number 40 and they say, Aren't there only 32 teams in the NFL? <laughs> yeah. That was probably the the response that uh I'm well, sorry, that the first one where he said says the guy who's gonna be watching 17 games of Drew Locke this year. I I I gen, I absolutely genuinely laughed out loud. I absolutely did. I thought that was a really funny response. My only response mad. to that was screw you, tennis, because I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't come up with anything. Yeah, I mean that's why I, that's why I genuinely left. I was like, that's actually funny. I, I I got nothing to say to that. It is funny. Yeah, except for if uh, Dreno Smock comes out and lights the world on fire for the for the year, then we can then they can have some Twitter fun going back. I think this is the only thing Twitter is useful for. It's good, you know. It's it's no, also it's not good. The it's Twitter good is not for, good. Look, where else is DK? going to go to defend the honor of new Seahawks quarterbacks. He is out for everybody who's calling him a diva. This guy doesn't even have a contract for this upcoming season. And he is out there defending drew lock in social media. Well, he could not take it to Twitter. He could just go to, is it like uh Roland Garros? Is that where they play the U S open wherever the U S open stadium is uh, and just go stand center court and take his Shirtless. shirt off. Yep. And demand to speak to the young Zoomer running the Twitter account. That's where he could have actually defended Drew Locke's honor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, gladiator style arena. Yes. He could have used the net to just like, you know, strangle the, the kid. Yeah. It would have been great. And then you have Joaquin Phoenix doing the thumbs down. Yeah, absolutely. With that cold stare. Mm-hmm. Just thumbs down. Mm-hmm. I like it. Man, why don't we have DK pitted against social media Zoomers in a gladiator style arena in the offseason? I'm going to guess that that's prohibited by whatever new contract he's going to sign. <laughs> Is that part of the or maybe it's just uh, against the personal conduct policy of NFL? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. You probably probably get half as many games as freaking Watson. I'm telling you that they won't give him any games this suspension because it would be it would be must see TV. It would be awesome. It would be. It'd be kind of like all these uh, YouTube fights now that happen between the what are their names? Uh, yeah, ends with Paul. They're, I mean, Logan Paul, inter- yeah. Yeah, it, it switched the Paul. Like, there's two of them. Like, yeah, it'd be in that style, right? Where they go out and they just get thumped by a real athlete. So Logan Paul 
fights DK. Or the other Paul. Or the other Paul. Rand Paul? (laughs) Yes, definitely Rand Paul. (laughs) He got in a fight on his lawn uh, in Kentucky and got his ass kicked by his neighbor. I don't think Rand Paul's going to be getting it done. Okay. No. It's the only other Paul that came to mind immediately. Okay. Not your quarterback, Paul? Who? Then uh, I guess we decided that wasn't true. Oh. That Drew's real <laughs> right. first name is That's Paul. That's his dad. I still want it to be true. Well, one thing we know to be true is that we have some awesome members of our flock, especially our executive producers, DCH, Dustin Mock, Brian Shaw, and Rebecca Christensen. All basking in their own glory over the 4th of July weekend, I'm sure, because they are that special of people. Yes, we hope that you all had a happy 4th of July weekend. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you made it through the weekend with all your digits. Yeah, you don't want a Pierre, Paul. You do not want a Pierre, Paul, (laughs) your way through the weekend. (laughs) No, you really don't. I was really happy here in Montana because it uh, felt like a traditional 4th of July where it just kind of rained buckets most of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that meant that uh, we weren't going to light the forest on fire. That's, That's usually a plus. It's a huge plus. I'm a big proponent that we ditch fireworks on 4th of July and move all fireworks to New Year's and just agree on that. Because you can torch off as many as you want on New Year's and not burn the forest down. Not going to be a problem. Shoot. Why don't we add in Thanksgiving as as a day to do fireworks, too? And then that way you have extra. Heck, yeah. you're doing a New Look, Year's Day anyway. I mean, people light off fireworks here on New Year's, New Year's Eve all the time. Yeah, of course. So you need to move the day so you have an extra day. And that would cement Thanksgiving easily, hands down, far and away, as the best holiday of all the holidays. It'd be good. You have the food, you have the fireworks. It'd be a good time. If you want to get get rowdy with it, you could uh you could dress up and just have a costume. And then we could get rid of Halloween too. Let's just knock it out in one day. Costumed bottle rocket wars. With Turkey and pecan pie and uh, all the fixings and football and football. Yeah. Greatest. Wow. That would be the greatest American holiday of all time. <laughs> they would just have to have a monster truck. Why don't we do it every month? Why Why do we have to wait for Thanksgiving to do this? I don't know. We should. We should make this a, a monthly holiday. Wow. What's today? Oh, it's the it's the 12th of the month. It's America Day. <laughs> There we go. Fireworks, Fireworks, costumes, food, turkey, food, football. And then at halftime, we have a monster truck show. (laughs) Man, this is what we get paid for right here. America Day. America Day. (laughs) 12 of them. Well, yeah. I mean, we're the greatest country on earth. So you got to do it every single month just Mm -hmm. to remind everybody. Mm hmm. And if they think that's excessive, and then, then you get the Monday off afterwards. So that way you can really go hard on Sunday. A hundred percent. Yeah, you have to. You have to make the day after America Day a national day of rest. <laughs> it might make us vulnerable to attack, but I'm still in. I'm, I'm into it. I'm having such a good time with this that we're putting off our, our welcome to the flock. We got some new members of the flock. Yes, even Hell in the yeah. off season in July. Yeah, exactly. This is probably why, because we come up with these sort of ideas. Who are these fine fine folks? Well, for one, I want to I want to start off by thanking Chaz Woodstock who came in at uh, $1 a month because a couple shows ago when we thought that we got skunked in that show, yeah. Google had decided that our new patron emails were spam. So yes, a long what? overdue welcome to the flock to Chaz. Okay, so not only did Chaz bail us out for not being skunked here for a week in the off season, but then he didn't even get the recognition for it. And on top of all of that, we didn't even get an email of protest from Chaz. He just took it on the chin like a man. <laughs> this guy's an amazing little flocker. I'm happy to have you, bud. Yeah. And usually I would have caught them logging into Patreon uh, because... Because you because you stock everybody on Patreon. Well, no, I you just I, I usually <laughs> log in to Patreon just to see if we have any messages mm. and uh, and that sort of thing. And I feel bad that I didn't catch that. Gotcha. Someone who should have been in last week, Santiago Rodriguez, in at three dollars. Santiago. I know we've had Santiago in before, so I think Santiago's back. Yes. Yes. Uh, needed to be. Uh, 
needed to be back in the flock. I could see how he was getting the uh, the pangs being out of the flock. I could see how that would be tough for a guy. Yeah. Christian Yonka, who's Christian from Germany. I think that's how we pronounce Yonka. Uh, came in at three euro a month. I've been a freeloader ever since I stumbled across your podcast and I'm getting mighty close to the two year line. Ooh. So, yes. And for new listeners, I don't. Yes. This was not something that we came up with ourselves as the freeloader grace period, but it was something that we we recognized among people who said, I've been listening for about two years now and I feel like it's time now to support the show. And so we just there was a pattern that we mm -hmm. recognized of people saying after two years. And so, yes, we, we did settle upon that as what feels like the, the amount of time that you have a grace period. Some people, they they tune in for the first time after the first month. They say, I want to support these guys. Other people, it takes them about two years before they start feeling the guilt. Oh, absolutely. This is how pretty much any good relationship in my life has gone. Friend, family, uh, you know, romantic, whatever. It takes about two years for me to grow on you. It's really how it is. But no, this this uh, little deadline kind of came about organically. It didn't come from uh, tyranny, that's for sure. Just kind of came about. And uh, yeah, if you've been listening and not donating for two years, we've provided two years of value to your freaking life. We do. That's what we did for you. Yeah. And you can't. And you can't like donate a dollar a month, you freeloader. I mean, dang. Hey, and on top of that, with inflation the way that it is, that should be at least two dollars a month. I can get I can get a tenth of a gallon of gas. We have had a few people who did need to drop off here in the in this off season because I get it. I mean, you know, yeah, we all know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. So no, no shame if you had to drop off. I mean, the, a, a tiny bit of shame. But they see they already were supporting us. This is right. we're talking about the grace period. Maybe maybe we give people a, we float people in a, a couple extra months with this economy. Like if, if oh, you're 100%. hitting if you're hitting the two year mark like this off season, and you're like, oh, these guys are making me feel guilty, but I just can't do it. We'll give you a couple more months. That's cool. Yeah, we can give you a, a tough economy grace period. Yeah, there we can go. do that. Yeah, and just have to push it off a little bit. But yeah. back to Christian's email. I've been a freeloader ever since I stumbled across your podcast and I'm getting mighty close to the two year line. So I've decided to finally step out of the shadows and clean up my Hakra. I became a Seahawks fan for life ever since I spent a year in Albany, Oregon and had the chance to see a Seahawks game in the old kingdom in 1996. It wasn't yeah, cool. a great game, but a lasting experience. Nevertheless, your podcast is a real gem and a great way to keep in touch with everything Seahawks related. And I am eagerly awaiting the new show every week. Keep up the great work. I am absolutely thrilled about the Munich game. It won't be easy to get tickets, but the trip might be worth it either way to soak up the NFL spirit within the city and to get in touch with other flockers. Catfish! The lambs. Catfish! The whiners. And ah, I don't even care enough to waste any fan hate on that Arizona team. Christian from <laughs> Hamburg, Germany. Yeah. See, it was uh, fate that Christian's email got kicked back a week because that fits into this show really well. And uh, appreciate you, bud. Looking forward to seeing you in Munich. Uh, yeah, we're going to find a way for every little flocker that gets out there for that to get tickets, man. Like, we're, we're going to make it happen. We're going to will this. We just have to collectively support the Hakra. Yes, absolutely. And That's it'll how it's going to work. And it'll happen. Christian says, by the way, foolproof way to differentiate between stalagmites and stalactites in three simple steps. I promise you'll never forget which one is which after this, but I have to apologize because it is a bit raunchy. Remember that stalagmites and stalactites are really old and they've been there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Two, take away letter E in stalagmites and stalactites and read them out loud. <laughs> now tell me, which is the one that points to the floor? Yeah, it's definitely not the uh, the mitt. Not the mitts. No. So there you go. Yeah. And you'll never forget now. I, I honestly never will. That was like about the only way. If only my teacher in the seventh grade had, uh, you know, told me about uh, the tits at the end of stalactites, I would have figured it out. <laughs> would have stuck for life. Would have stuck for life. 
Turns out, especially in, in that time of life, like I was really interested in such things. Uh, has that changed? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think the intensity is not quite the same as, uh, you know, when you're 13. So it hasn't changed. <laughs> well, okay. No, fine. Chris Perez in at $5 a month. Sorry, guys. Supported you guys for a while, but got a new debit card and forgot to renew. No excuses, though. I just simply need to do better. Go Hawks. Catfish. The Niners. Catfish. The Rams. And Catfish. the Browns for 24 plus obvious reasons. Also, the cards don't deserve a Catfish. few when you'd never do anything past week <laughs> eight. <laughs> oh, my God. The emails are on point this week. You guys are amazing. Oh, my gosh. And he's so right about uh, uh, the Browns and everything there. That, that's awesome. And hey. Uh, he said no excuses for the debit card thing. Screw that, dude. That's a legit excuse. I have so many issues in my life every time the Wells wants to reissue me a freaking debit card. I'm like, will you stop it? Like, all my auto pays, all my auto fills, all that stuff. It all gets goofed up. Yeah, I know I did that with Target sent me a new debit card. And I kept, I'm, I'm entering the number. It says, you need to check the number on this. I'm like, no, I've checked the number 15 times. And I've entered it right every single you time. You need to check the number. <laughs> and then I, for whatever reason, I forgot to cut up the old one. And I, I found it two cards below in my desk uh, under the, the old Target debit card. And it's, oh, I got the, got the new dates on this one. Yeah. Still, the, still yeah. the right number. Yeah. Mike Amberland in at $60 for the year. So holy smokes, Mike. Yeah. Welcome to Mike. Yeah. Going big all welcome. in for the year. Man, he uh he let his uh dollars do the talk in there. No email. So that's uh that's impressive. I bet you he's the strong silent type, Mike. Yeah, and Mike has been with us for a while. He just he went he did the upgrade. The went from three dollars monthly to the $5 a month for the whole year all at once. And this is a great time to do that too, because one of the things that I found out, it used to be February was our our toughest month for new members of the flock. And yeah. uh, we we fixed that somehow. Now, yeah. Ju July, the toughest month. So great month to decide to support if you wanna either go from you know, monthly to a, an annual subscription in July. Now's the time to do it. Oh, for sure. And another member of the flock making the upgrade from monthly to an annual pledge, Liad Levi in at $60 for the year. Hey, all right, bud. Well, I appreciate you uh, having so much faith in how much you love this podcast that you're willing to pay all up front. We also got a review. It's another way to provide value back to the show. Leave a review in Apple Podcasts. Yeah. We got Brian P. Gives us a five-star review. Says, great co-hosts. I listen to quite a few podcasts throughout the workday and only the Seahawkers podcast makes the cut to have notifications turned on. Ooh. Enough said. Yeah. Wow. That, uh, I don't even think Brittany has notifications turned on her phone for my texts. <laughs> like, you know, that, I feel pretty special, man. It's good. I yeah. know. Very cool. Yeah. Great review from Brian. So really appreciate that. I wanted to mention that, let's see, I am I sent out an email this past week for our Seahawkers podcast Pick'em League weekly winners. I'm still waiting for a response. I See, I, I sent out a couple emails and I never got a response, so I think maybe they went to spam mm, uh, because, yeah. you know, like the congratulations you won emails i think just get flagged <laughs> yeah yeah we may have to come up with like a phrase that everybody knows that we can put in there that it isn't as easily flagged yeah like good job cheater you know <laughs> something like that so yeah but i did send out another email as a group email and i tried to to get rid of as many of those flag words as possible while yeah. still getting the point across and, and i did get a good response I'm only waiting to hear back from Rashad Penny's right leg. Okay. Cars on fire. Dropkick Aussies. And I think, let's see. Uh, and Adam's family. So if those were your podcast team names, check your email or email me. I've got a prize list to get to you. Yeah, for sure. And if I don't hear from you uh, by the next time we put out a show, 
I'm just going to go to the next person on the list and you'll just have to pick from it's like the the actual draft. You're going to get skipped over and then you'll just have to pick up to because I want to start getting prizes mailed out. All right. So these guys on the clock, you're on the clock. You have one week, maybe yeah. 10 days, depending okay. on when we put out the next show. And if you know who those people are, if you know any one of them, you know, give them the heads up, guys. Right. Because they may not tune into the Dreno Smock podcast. No, this week. the know your rival yeah. Cardinals that nobody yeah. that clearly we had uh, two <laughs> emails saying they're they're not even worth their time to I think, catfish. I think our energy level for it speaks uh, volumes as well. Like I think it's probably about the same as uh, everybody else's uh, energy level for listening to it. Yeah, well, you know this is our warm up show before we really get into the Niners and Rams hate. Absolutely. I can't I can't blow everything this week. And Michael sent in. Yeah, he has an idea for this this next season. Says, hey, Brandon, on the next pod, can you throw out the idea of getting a petition signed for every time Gino throws a touchdown at home? The stadium plays the intro to Gino by the Dexies Midnight Runners. Thanks for all the pods. Go Hawks. Hey, go Hawks. You, you, you probably know the, the Dexies Midnight Runners, right? Uh, I'm really, really bad at band names slash song titles. I don't even get the words to most songs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Remember way back in the day, there was some commercial and they're talking about misunderstanding and they were playing the song, pour some sugar on me. And the guy's like singing in his car, like pour some shook up ramen on me. That's you. And that's more or less me. I, I'm such a disaster at it. So I probably know them. Like you play the song, but I, yeah, it's essentially a Gino Chan. Gino, Gino, Gino. No, fantastic. It's a hell of a suggestion. If only Gino was starting. But still, I, it could still work for every time Gino throws a touchdown at home. Yeah, you play that. Yeah, is there a song? Or we that, can just ha- we can just ha- chant Gino too. Is there a song that has a Dreno chant? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, Dreno, Dreno. Mm-hmm. Kind of sounds like Breno. Or Drano. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that's not a good connotation. Well, what do you say we get on to some do better and better at life? All right, man. My do better this week is for the Desert Sun. And in the opinion section written by one of its readers was, uh, here's the title of the article, an idea for solving West drought. Let's divert Mississippi River water to the Colorado. I don't know how many of you folks have been following this. I'm sure a fair amount have. Like the Colorado River, like is basically just drying up. Lake Mead is just drying up because there's a bunch of people who decided that it was a great idea to go live in a fucking desert and then uh, use all the little bit of water that's there and then be like, oh no, we're out of water. What, whatever do we do? This guy literally goes through a case of how to solve the problem of people living in a place that has no catfishing water. Like he makes a case to sustain this stupid idea of a bunch of people living in a desert by diverting another massive river or a good portion of it, three or four States away into an entirely another watershed just so people can live in freaking Vegas and grow almond trees in California. It is the dumbest idea I have ever heard of in my entire life. What could possibly go wrong? Could the Mississippi dry up? Nah, it'll be fine. Well, let's take all that extra water. It'll be good. Could there be a bunch of invasive species that live maybe, I don't know, on the other side of the catfishing divide that make their way over into uh, a totally different watershed? Yeah, let's do that. That makes all the sense. Instead of, I don't know, move out of the catfishing desert. Go somewhere where there's water that supports human life. Why stay there? I don't understand it. Like I'm watching this Lake Mead stuff. Like they're like weeks away from just being Deadpool. Like the water can't even flow in and out anymore because there's just not enough. And there's millions of people there. Oh, well, let's save them. Let's let's go ahead and divert the other major river in the country over that way. That muddy, gross water into the water that comes out of the rocky fucking mountains. What a stupid idea. Instead of just moving, let's move an entire river. Great idea. Do better. So, so your answer is to for millions of people to to get up and and move. 
Yes. Okay. Why would you move somewhere where there's no water? I don't think that they move there because there's no water. They just live there and have lived there. I, I, I know, but like in your decision making process of, hey, should I move here or not move here? Like, well, I like the sun and the dry heat's nice. Oh, wait, there's no water. I can't go without three days without water. I should probably not live there. Like, how is that not part of your decision making process? I, I, I'm intrigued, though, by the uh, by this idea. Yeah. You want to yeah. take you want to take brown chocolate milk water and mix it in with pure Colorado Rocky. Colorado River water. You want to do that? Do you want to have know. catfish? Do you want to have catfish going up and down the Colorado? Because that's what you get. That's how you get catfish. Fill up the Grand Canyon with water and uh, just pipe it in. Well, they already have reservoirs. Yeah. Lake Powell, Lake Mead, all that stuff. I know, but they're drying up. You need Glen to fill Canyon, them up. Glen Canyon, the Flaming Gorge. Fill yeah, them up with they're water. drying up because... There's too many people with their straw in the milkshake. The the almond farms that uh, that's always kind of baffled me. It ought to, because the almonds need a lot of water, crap tons. Then they're not even that great of a nut. They're so so nut. They're mid tier nut. They're mid tier nut. Yeah, yeah. But for the amount of water that it takes, nah. I, I wonder what takes more water, a, a cashew or an almond. I don't know. I'm not giving up cashews. I know that. <laughs> you you drain the whole uh, southwest of its water to have cashews. <laughs> Whatever it needs. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever the cashew Build farmers need. Build that pipeline need. from the Mississippi. I need my cashews, <laughs> damn it. You, uh, you would think that I would know more about where cashews grow, but nope. Oh, I don't have a clue, sadly. Uh, what's your number one nut? Is the cashew the number one nut? Cashew is number one, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to beat. Then probably sunflower seed. That's like number two. I'd probably go number two. Yeah. I think I'd go peanut before I went sunflower seed. No. Honey roasted peanuts? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And well, you don't okay. even have to crack up your tongue on the on the shell. After about 15 uh, sunflower seeds, your mouth is half raw. See, part of my thing is if, if you have to add flavor to the nut, then is it really, is it worth it? They're roasted. It, with honey? Yeah. I, I mean, know. cashews They're are salted. Sure. So is that, not, seed. is that not adding flavor? Is that just enhancing flavor in your opinion? It's flavor, it's flavor enhancer. Okay. Honey could be argued as a flavor enhancer. <laughs> it's true. It's natural flavor enhancer. Right. Good. I'm glad we Might got that sorted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nut rankings. Send us your nut rankings for <laughs> next week. <laughs> oh, if somebody doesn't write it with number one, mine. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> number one, my. <laughs> number two, D's. <laughs> there it is. We got you figured out. Yeah. Tits and nuts on this podcast. That's what we got going. <laughs> my do better this week. Just for the freaking Seahawks. I I know we started off the show talking Baker. I'm I'm putting him in my do better this week for missing out on Baker Mayfield. <laughs> hey, this is my do better. Screw you. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Baker had a guaranteed 18.8 million due to him from the Browns this season. He agreed to rework his deal to go to the Panthers. The Browns are paying 10 million of the salary. The Panthers only have to pay 5 million of his salary this year. The remaining money, they decided it was non-guaranteed could be bonus so that way he ends up, you know, being made whole by making this deal. And what did the Panthers have to give up for it. A conditional 2024 fifth round pick. Yeah. Yeah. That's nothing. Okay. No, it's $5 not million dollars for a quarterback and a conditional. So they may not, it may not even be a fifth round pick. It might be a sixth or a seventh or maybe no pick at all, depending on how it ends up. The, the conditions end up being met, but $5 million. $5 million to improve their quarterback room. Seahawks chose to pass on it. John Schneider, Pete Carroll, do better. Yeah, uh, couldn't disagree more. Because uh, the Panthers, they could have gotten Baker Mayfield for league minimum if they just had had patience. Well, they had to. They, they paid the, the difference of what amounted to, I don't know, Quentin Jefferson. So... 
Big whoop. Hey, look, any dollar that you pay Baker this year that was on that contract is a waste of money. Five million. You didn't Five have to pay million. it. You didn't have to pay it. They were going to cut him at some point. This this way they guaranteed that they got him on their roster. Oh, well, congratulations. For what amounts to not much. Yeah. You get you have dumb and dumber out there playing quarterback. It'd be great. My better at life this week, though. Yeah. For Timothy Bella of the Washington Post. Put together an uh a, a list of very helpful uh bison facts. Because unfortunately. This happens every off season. I feel like we get into this time of year mm-hmm. and there have been multiple people gored by a bison in Yellowstone National Park that it uh, captures the national attention enough to cause a national outlet like the Washington Post to write an article about it. Heck yeah. There's nothing more hilarious than watching a terrorist get flung around by a bison. Well, th- so this one, I, I don't know what happened. But a woman and her daughter were returning to their vehicle at a trailhead. And it says that they inadvertently approached the bison. Okay. Now, if you're trying to take a selfie with a bison, then I feel like there is uh, like there's something a little deserving that goes along with that. Like you kind of ask for it. It's not hard to miss a buffalo when you're out hiking around. You know what I'm saying? It's not hard. Yeah. They're kind of big. You should miss. just be like, oh, there's one of them big boys. How about I just not go near them? Yeah. They don't move fast. I mean, they can, but they don't. Well, see, that's the thing. So normally you just, you get the the standard. Okay. People are getting gored. Stay away. You know, the, the standard uh, uh, park rule is 25 yards of the bison is, is where you generally want to stay clear of. So quarter of the football field. That's still pretty tight. That's still pretty tight. It's, it's say, closer than I'd want to get. Yeah, I'd say at least 50. It's a good rule. Yeah. I'd do 50. But there's some bison facts in this article. This is, this is not something I normally see in these types of articles. As the largest mammals in North America, bison have injured more people at Yellowstone than any other animal, according to the Park Service. They can weigh as much as one ton and stand about six feet at the shoulder. Bison can run up to 35 miles per hour. But generally don't do that. Generally don't. That's that's pretty fast. Yeah. They can also jump up to six feet vertically. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. No. Six feet. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Uh, their spark score must be high. A super high spark score. <laughs> because not only that, they have uh, the ability to quickly pivot to combat predators. So they got... They've, they got big sack, they too. Got big sack. <laughs> Short, Short area, area quickness. quickness. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Is, have we been sleeping on Buffalo as, the, as maybe North America's greatest athlete? I think they are. Yeah. So... Four. Well, what's Timoth- there? Well, how many reps of uh, 220 can they do? I shoot. I bet pretty. I bet they can put that bar up probably 50 times with one hoof. Yeah. So for Timothy Bella, for letting us know about the high spark bison, <laughs> better at life than Skip Bayless. Do you think they could play center? You know what? I I think I would take any bison over Austin Blythe. Would you, in a matchup between Aaron Donald and a bison, who do you got? Do you think that Aaron Donald trains against bison in the offseason? I think he'd like to, but there's park rules. You know, the, the, Aaron Donald sneaking into the park after dark. <laughs> and Just looking sparring to get it with on. bison. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's have a go, buddy. Get over here, Fluffy Nuts. We're going to do this. Wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. My better at life for this week is for old school baseball player, Bobby Bonilla. I was not aware of this until just this uh, last week. It's Bonilla day this past week. Yeah. Bobby Bonilla day is July 1st. And the reason is 
because he is the ultimate keep getting them checks guy. This is, I, I respect this game so much. So basically at the end of his contract, he could have gotten bought out for like 5.9 million. And he was like, well, I mean, that's nice. I, I mean, I'd take the 5.9 and they're like, yeah, well, you know, we're trying to do some other things. So how about we defer that to 2011 to 2035 and with 8% interest, which now works out to he gets $1.19 million every July 1st. What a genius maneuver. I love it. That's exactly. I want somebody to give me a $1.19 million every July 1st. Keep getting them checks, Bobby Bonilla. Better at life than Skip Bayless. See, and people who watch baseball now, this was a guy who was probably toward the tail end of his career when we were in grade school. Yes. He's and a so, star with the Pirates. Yeah. Went to the Mets, kind of underachieved. Right. Yeah. And it, I think it's the Mets that are continuing to pay him, right? Oh, it surely is. Yeah. Only the Mets. Yeah. Bobby Bonilla getting them checks. Yeah. That, uh, Let's take 5.4 million or whatever it was he was due and turn it into 24 million and just pay him later. He made that work. Good for him, dude. Now we just need to figure out who's going to. Who can we defer our checks to into the future? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, I guess we just need to make a deal with the little flockers and yeah. we could just stop doing the show and they could just keep paying us for it over the next 25 years. Yeah. Problem solved. Oh, that Problem reminds solved. me. Uh, somebody on YouTube commented about the, the fact that to, oh, uh, the other big news item, Jody Allen, <laughs> we're putting a news item right at the end of the show. Jody oh, Allen sure. put out a note, said Trailblazers, Seahawks, not for sale for a long time. Yeah. Uh, not surprising. Not surprising. But it reminded me of the comment that uh, you needed to grind 5 million wheels to save up enough money to buy the Seahawks. Yeah. If you, if you did one wheel per hour, is that about right? Or is yeah. that... I it, There's no way I could do that, but... Uh, Cause you know, I mean, some take maybe an hour and then others will take a weekend. Okay. Yeah. I, I tried to figure out how long it would take you. And I think I came up with 571 years. No. Okay. Well, I'll get right after it. And with that, there's only one thing left to say. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.